Lynette Oxley here for Tac Shack Tactical TV. Today we're here on the range and uh, at Joburg Metro Range in Ruderpoort. We are testing something out of our vault. Uh, it is the SVD and I'm going to ask uh, our Russian speaking person to actually uh, give an insert of what exactly SVD stands for. Right. Hello everyone, I'm Chris Parteka, in-house counsel for GOSA. I'm going to discuss the history of the SVD. In Russian, the Sniperskaya Vintovka Dragonova, Dragonov's sniper rifle. One of the most iconic sniper or rifles in the world, which is not really a sniper rifle. It's one of the largest production uh, rifles in the world. Chambered in a common, uh, a common caliber, which has been produced since the 19th century, the 7.62x54R. It was developed in 1957 by Yevgeny Dragunov. It was adapted by the Soviets in 1963 and it was further developed uh, and used uh, in the Olympics uh, and it did very, very well in the Olympics. The Red Army's new marksman rifle, uh, the requirements for it was that it had to be light, durable and uh, reliable, uh, especially in difficult circumstances. That's it. As uh, I have noticed from when we were shooting the gun, it's a very similar to uh, AK controls, uh, the Alim rifles that we're shooting, the Galils, all of those type of rifles, uh, but that's uh, we. The similarity ends. I'm actually going to ask uh, Chris to talk to us about uh, the differences between why this is not an AK. Enjoy! I will do my best! Empty! So quickly! <laughs> How was it? That was brilliant. Did you that do was it? brilliant. She's feisty. <laughs> She's feisty. She is feisty. <laughs> but she, she packs a good punch. But I it's love not it. Too bad. It's um, yeah, it's yeah. It's not. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi guys. I've been asked just to comment on this. Um, so so both of the guns in front of me are, are, are subject to quite a lot of confusion. Uh, People very often say that the, the Dragunov is nothing but a, a stretched AK. Uh, that's not true at all. It's a completely different action. It's, um, and, and we have an example of, 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 of a stretched AK in front of me. This is the PSL. Uh, and if you can have a look closely at the action, it's quite a bit heavier. Um, the, the PSL is ex exactly that, it's a stretched AK. Uh, the Dragunov is a completely different design of firearm, even though it might seem superficially similar. It's a, a completely different firearm. Uh, this one I must mention is not a, uh, it's not an SVD Dragunov, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Ishmath um, uh, um, Tiger, T-I-G-R, um, which is the civilian version of, of, the, of the Dragunov. The only difference in the, in the two is that uh, um, it doesn't have bayonet lugs on. Uh, this has also got the paratrooper barrel, which is slightly shorter than the... Uh, this, this, this PSL is actually a, a closer rip. Uh, in terms of the, of the front end of the gun, is closer to an original Dragunov. But in terms of the gun itself, it's different. Um, the action of the gun is completely different. Um, the, the long stroke, this, this has got a long stroke piston in it. Uh, this has got a short stroke, uh, a, a very short stroke design that's very similar to, a, um, to an FNFAL um, where, it, where it uses a short stroke piston just to tap the, um, a captive piston that just taps the, the, uh, the bolt out of, out of a, a battery and allows, a, allows it then to, to, um, to recoil and, and uh, reload itself. Um, Whereas this uses a piston, it's got a huge piston going through, and I'll show you this briefly if you'd like. Uh, the long piston design is less accurate than the short stroke piston design. 
Uh, there's more moving parts here. It's a, it's a big heavy piston that, that reciprocates, and that's, that's very difficult for recovery for, for shots. Whereas the short stroke design just taps the, it's, it's, it's a very light recoil action. Um, so this is essentially a, a longer AK, and this is not. Uh, this is much more accurate, this is less accurate. Uh, although neither of these guns is a proper, in modern terms, sniper rifle, that's because we've changed, since the 70s, we've changed our definition of what a sniper can do. Uh, the Russians were a couple of decades ahead of the rest of the world um, in introducing what they uh, designated marksman role to their infantry uh, units. And uh, in the Russian Manual of Arms, the designated marksman rifle was this. There would be a couple of these assigned to, um, to, a to an infantry platoon, um, whereas pretty much in the, in the Western sense, um, anything longer range than, than, than short range, combat range, was, was assigned to specialist snipers in sniping units, etc., etc., in special forces units. That's changed over the years, and we've started to put to embed designated marksmen into our infantry units, uh, a lot, as, as was the, the Russian uh, method, uh, 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 manual of arms. The, um, I'm just going to unload this one, although you'll see both rifles do have uh, chamber flags in. But I'm just going to take the chamber flags out for purposes of demonstration. But they're both very different guns. In order to disassemble the Dragunov, the dust cover, as you'll see, doesn't have the dust cover doesn't doesn't have a little uh, um, uh, the the rear end of the uh, of the of the bolt carrier sticking out the back to hold it closed. You just you swing a, a lever over, and the dust cover comes off. And you can see the recoil spring is captive in the dust cover. The bolt then is this little short thing. Bolt carrier with bolt inside it. Very small, very neat. Uh, the mass moving backwards and forwards, reciprocating when you fire, when it reloads, is very small and very light, so therefore not disturbing the firearm, allowing for quicker follow-up shots. The PSL, on the other hand, huh, Wait until you see the stuff that comes out of this thing. It's quite a bit heavier than the than the Dragunov. Chamber flag out. Gun is empty. Disassembles like an AK. As you can see, dust cover off ordinary, typical AK type dust cover. And then the recoil spring. And Look at how long the piston is. So you have this entire mass reciprocating every time you fire a shot by comparison to this little thing. So you have a whole bunch of, of, of momentum moving backwards and forwards. Typically with the, long, with the piston designs, the recoil impulse is not so much back as forwards. So when that mass moves forward after it reloads around, the barrel dips. Uh, but thereafter the guns are fairly much the same um, with, sm with small differences. The, uh, um, the guns were designed to be used with iron sights in a, in a, in a shorter combat role or with the, the PO, uh, POSP uh, one sight which would on both, in both instances attached to the rail on the left hand side of the gun, on the left hand side of the receiver. So this, 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 the scope on top of, the, of, of, of its specific mount would fit over this and clamp on, on both cases. But it was always made so that it could be easily removed so that the gun could be used in a short, uh, in a short range uh, um, application for house clearing along with an infantry squad or whatever it was. Because designated marksmen weren't considered to be Special people in, in, the, in the Russian Manual of Arms. Uh, what else can I say about it? Uh, 
they're, they're great rifles, fantastic rifles to shoot both of them. The, the Dragunov is inherently a lot more accurate than the POSP. The Dragunov could be deployed out to, it was designed to be deployed out to about 850 uh, meters. Um, I've seen one deployed out beyond 900 meters with good effect. Uh, the POSP, I doubt whether you're going to drag this gun out past 650 meters. Um, it's not with, with any kind of acceptable accuracy. Even though the cartridge that, it, uh, the, that they both use, the 762x54R, is an incredibly good intermediate range cartridge. Much in the sense of a 306 um, in Western parlance. Anyway, those are the guns. The Dragunov came into being because of a doctrinal change in the Soviet armed forces. Initially, of course, as we know in World War I, they started out with bolt-action rifles, which was then supplemented with submachine guns, some semi-automatic rifles, near to pretty much the end of the war, and post-war with the adoption of the SKS, and eventually the Avtomat Kalashnikov. The Soviets realized that with the submachine guns, this doctrinal shift to automatic weapons, they had a range limitation. AK's effective range in the 7.62 cartridge, pretty much three to 400 meters. They needed something that could reach out a bit further. They decided to host a competition, like all manufacturing of Soviet arms are, developed. In this competition, they designed a specification for a rifle that could reach out beyond the range of the AK. Members of this competition were Alexander Konstantinov, Simonov, who was known for the design of the SKS, and Evgeny Dragunov, an Olympian who competed in biathlon and very much enjoyed shooting. In the course of the competition, Mr. Dragunov developed the SVD. Of course, this is not exactly what he developed, as this is a civilian model with some differences. These differences being only one to 300 meters on the sights, no adjustable gas port, so you can't shoot, well, you can shoot in adverse conditions with this thing as, of course, it is a 7.62x54R, the rimmed cartridge, which aids in extraction. And as you can see, there's no bayonet lock. Eventually, once Evgeny Dragunov won this competition, incrementally, SVD was implemented into the arsenal of the armed forces of the Soviet Union, officially being adopted in 1964. Now, the rifle did see some action in Vietnam, of course, in the hands of Spetsnaz units that were attached to the NVA and some Viet Cong. I'm not too sure if any of those examples were captured by the Americans when they were in Vietnam, but that is where the SVD was tested and it was found to be a very effective firearm. Right, we don't have an example right here to show you, but originally the SVDs were issued with the PSO-1 scope. The scope was met was mounted to the left side of the receiver on this rail. At the time, the PSO-1 scope was the most advanced scope in existence, far surpassing any optics that the West could produce at the time. Now, of course, this scope is now obsolete. However, it is still issued in more advanced forms to the Russian armed forces at the moment, and this rifle still continues to serve in the Russian armed forces till today, supplemented by more advanced bolt-action rifles, such as the SV-98, and a more modernized Dragunov, the SVDM. You'll note here that this barrel is significantly shorter than the PSL, which Paul discussed earlier. This is because this is a paratrooper model. Although this model originally was issued with a foldable side stock, well, side folder stock, this was issued to paratroopers, as of course a paratrooper can't carry a meter, 1.2 meter rifle around while jumping from a plane. This was a very effective rifle at the time, and continues to be in service.